This was the laptop I used in 2015. This is the one I upgraded in 2021. And this is the one I got in 2026. Over the years, I have used multiple machines. Some have worked great, some have struggled badly, and some have taught me some very expensive lessons. And that is exactly why I want to share with you some important things you should know before buying a laptop in 2026 for architecture and design. I'll also break down a list of 10 powerful laptops that you can purchase in 2026 in different price ranges. Whether you're a student, freelancer or running a firm, you will exactly know what to choose and what to avoid. I'm Salman, an architect and illustrator. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so we can grow together as a community. So let's get started. I got this Dell laptop in 2015 in my second year of architecture. Back then, I knew nothing about buying laptops, so I simply assumed that any laptop would work fine for architecture. That actually costed me a lot along the years, and this laptop really struggled with complex models and rendering softwares like V-Ray and Lumion. Along those years, I really understood how important it is to pick the right laptop for your specific workflow in architecture, and if your focus is on rendering, visualization or if your focus is only on 2D drafting or light 3D modeling. Years later, I got this Acer Predator Triton in 2021. This was not a high-end workstation, but only an entry-level laptop with a GTX graphics. That was all I could afford at that point. This was still manageable with basic rendering, 2D work, Photoshop and illustrations. For more complex video editing and rendering, I switched to this desktop that you see on the background. And this year, I have upgraded to this Lenovo Legion Pro 7 because I needed more portability and high-end graphics since I create content as well. I have the need to edit videos and access 3D models while in travel. I bought this laptop based on the specification more than the brand or model as such. We will talk about the specifications on the later part of this video. Your software matters more than the brand. Softwares like AutoCAD and SketchUp rely more on the CPU speed, while softwares like Revit, Lumion or DeFi need more powerful GPUs. So like I've mentioned, always choose a laptop based on what you use rather than the brand or the model. Storage fills up faster than you expect. Architectural softwares actually take up a lot of space on your SSD and more than that, your architectural files like Revit files, 3D models or renders take up a lot of space as well. So a 1TB storage should be ideal to save your time and avoid file management issues. Upgrade options extend a laptop's life. Check if the RAM or SSD can be extended further and this can easily add up up to 2 or 3 years to your laptop, increasing the lifespan as your projects become more complex. Is portability really important to you? If you're a student and if it's possible for you to do all complex 3D rendering and modeling at home and you only need a light laptop to work in college or if you're a professional who does most of the work from just one location, I would highly recommend you to opt for a desktop rather than a laptop. This is because you can upgrade the graphics graphic card, RAM and storage for a desktop much easier than a laptop. So only choose a laptop if portability is really important to you. Buy for the next 3 to 5 years, not just today. Architectural softwares keep getting heavier. Choosing a slightly higher spec now can save you from the trouble from your software getting slowed down along the years and you wouldn't have to think about upgrading it after a few years. Here are some laptop specifications you need to look for that work well in 2026 and well into 2027 as well. CPU processor As for the CPU processor, look for an Intel Core i7 or an AMD Ryzen 7 as architectural softwares rely more on single core speed for modeling and drafting. This will be really helpful when you're multitasking between 2D, 3D and Photoshop work simultaneously. GPU or graphic card A dedicated graphic card is a bare minimum for laptop these days. NVIDIA RTX GPU is highly recommended for a smooth workflow. RTX 3000 series is an entry level for architects and a well-balanced graphic card would be 4000 series, typically the 4050, 4060 or higher. RAM or memory A 16GB RAM is minimum for students, but this can also become a bottleneck when you're handling complex projects. So, a 32GB RAM should be ideal for most of the complex works that you're doing. Storage Like I mentioned earlier, it's highly recommended to look for a high-speed NVMe SSD card that ideally reduces the loading time for softwares and files. A 1TB SSD is strongly recommended for your softwares, projects, backups and library. A 15 or a 16 inch display with at least full HD, ideally 1440 pixels or higher, gives you better clarity when you're working on models and drawings. Good sRGB and color accuracy is highly important when you're working on renders, material selection or client presentations. 
we have put together not just laptop models as such, but a series of laptops that you can choose based on your budget and usage. This list is made by reading a lot of articles and comments from users on Facebook, Instagram and Reddit as well. Quick note before we start, if you're someone who falls into this budget category, I would highly recommend to see if you can get a used laptop that has a much higher specification and falls in the next category. There are a lot of gamers who use a laptop for just one year and look to upgrade. This will give you a much higher value for money than the laptops in this category. So consider that point as well. Acer Nitro. This is one of the most popular budget gaming laptops for architecture students and it gives you a dedicated graphic card, decent cooling and inner power to handle 3D softwares. The prices start from around 60,000 and up to 92,000 and the lower end model has a fair and basic spec if you're getting started with that. Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3. This was suggested widely by a lot of users on Reddit in the budget segment category for architecture workflow. This ranges from 60,000 to 80,000. It actually works well for architectural design, especially if you're moving beyond just AutoCAD and into 3D. Dell G15. The G15 is for people who want maximum performance per rupee. It's a bit chunky, but the performance is priority here. It can easily handle large SketchUp files, heavy Rhino models, and real-time rendering much better than thinner laptops. Coming from Dell, you can expect it to have a solid build quality and customer support and it comes around 88,000 price range. Asus Tough The Asus Tough series is all about durability and sustained performance. These laptops are built to run heavy softwares for long hours. You'll find them from 70,000 price range which does have a decent specification and goes over up to 1.2 lakhs. HP Victus The HP Victus doesn't screen gaming which is good when you're going to a studio or work. Performance-wise, it's well-balanced, good CPUs, decent GPUs, and stable thermals. This series of laptops starts from 80,000 price range. This is like a sweet spot for serious architectural work like BIM, rendering, 3D, or multitasking. Lenovo LOQ The Lenovo LOQ is a very clean and practical performance laptop. It handles Rhino, Revit, SketchUp, and add off apps smoothly and doesn't overheat easily. You'll find these under 1 lakh as well, but ones with a good spec start from just over a lakh. Acer Predator The Acer Predator is built for heavy 3D and visualization work. If you're using Enscape, Lumion or DeFi, this laptop really shines. Strong GPUs and aggressive cooling mean smoother navigation and faster rendering previews. This was my Acer Predator that I got in 2021 and it has a GTX 1650 graphics. Mind you, it's not RTX but GTX but still the build quality of this laptop was really good along the years and I still continue to use it. Predator laptops start from 1 lakh price range and you can choose a laptop in this series based on your requirement. MSI Katana the MSI Katana offers excellent performance for the price. It's well suited for modeling, drafting and mid-level rendering without unnecessary extras. This series has both 15 and 17 inches and the HX range are the ones that pack the power. The Lenovo Legion Pro The Legion Pro series has some of the best thermals in this price range. Some of the older models in the Legion series fall in this mid-range category and some of the newer models are priced around 1.5 lakhs. Asus Rogue Strix or Zephyrus. These laptops are tuned for performance. Strix focuses on maximum power and Zephyrus balances power with portability. Both are excellent for architects working with large models, real-time rendering and heavy multitasking. 2023 or 2024 models fall in this mid-range category and some of the 2025 models are just around 1.5 lakhs. HP Omen. It's powerful and comfortable to use for long hours and it handles architectural software smoothly. I have come across architecture students using HP Omen from around the world and Reddit users also have some good things to say about this laptop. These are for advanced users, visualization specialists and for studio level workloads. Lenovo Legion Pro Once again, we have some powerful laptops from Legion Pro series in this segment. Mine is a 16-inch Lenovo Legion Pro 7 14th Gen i9 processor and RTX 4090 and this should serve me good for another 5 years if used well. These start at 1.6 lakh and goes over 2 lakh on the higher end. MSI Triton and Creator These laptops are built for extreme workloads, massive GPUs, strong CPUs and professional grade displays make them perfect for animation, cinematic renders and large-scale architectural visualization. Asus Pro Art P16 
Along with strong performance, it offers excellent color accuracy, perfect for architects. This is priced around 1.6 lakh currently. Dell XPS Precision or Alienware. I'm categorizing these three series under the same segment because all of them offer some solid performance with different priorities. The XPS sleek, lightweight and premium. The Precision offers stability and reliability for heavy BIM and CAD work. Alienware focuses on raw GPU power, aggressive cooling, making it perfect for visualization. Razer Blade 16 the Razer Blade 16 combines top tire performance with clean, minimal design. It's powerful enough for heavy rendering and real-time visualization. So that was still from the laptop guide for architects in 2026. I wanted to put together the decisions that I have made before purchasing this, so this can be useful to you as well. I hope you found this video to be helpful and if you did, please hit that like button and share this with your friends. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to keep up with all the latest updates in the industry. You can follow me on Instagram and the handle is right here. I'll see you on the next one.